As John Lennon would say, no one told me there would be days like these, strange days indeed, because I looked out my window and I actually saw a flying pig. There will be, if all goes well, an English leaders' debate for the October 1st election. This I ain't seen much of. Huh. Me neither. Chappie, I never have. Now, everyone has a horse in this race for the hearts of non-Francophone voters. Papa Bear Cuillard wants to reassure and comfort the Anglo heartland that will be enough porridge for all. The PQ Jean-Francois Lise will probably go for the sport of it. His English is the best of the four and obviously considers himself the smartest guy in the room. Francois Legault will struggle the most, but while he won't take NDG or Jacques Cartier, he does need some non-Francophone votes in key ridings. Now, his proposal to eliminate constitutionally guaranteed school boards for Anglos, well, likely to be a highlight. Then there are the Solidaires. They would be smart to put up student protest leader extraordinaire Gabriel Nadeau-Dubois as their debater. He just might charm young voters who like the idea of someone else paying for everything. Now, the idea of a debate in English is a wonderful and long overdue thing. Now, I worry that somehow it won't happen, but we got this far and that's just about the furthest we've ever been. But some can't leave well enough alone. There are those who don't want English-speaking Quebecers to get anything except maybe a one-way ticket to Ontario. Now, prime Anglo-baiter Pierre Curzi, for one. Now, Curzi is a former PQ politician and actor, although his claim to fame never made it much outside the borders of Quebec. Now, one of his more insightful comments was blaming a federal conspiracy for the lack of French-speaking players on the Canadians. Now, speaking on Quebec's most popular show this week on radio, he said holding an English-speaking debate would be shameful. C'est le débat en anglais qui est vraiment, là, à mon sens, une insulte à, à la politique totale du Québec. C'est-à-dire le Québec... Mais c'est Jean-François Lisée qui l'a poussé le plus. Ben justement, c'est honteux. What really is shameful is that neither co-host challenged Kersey's garbage. But that's the way it is, folks. For some misfits, any gain for the minority is a loss for the majority, an insult. We have tough skin, and it seems to me it's getting tougher. A debate in English is our right. We pay taxes, we live here, and vote here, so we belong, and we won't back down. With the election looming closer, the Liberal temple appears to be crumbling. More than one in five Liberal m as will not seek re-election. Now, the economy in Quebec is humming along tickety-boo. The best in memory and the scandal-prone Liberals seem to have kept their noses cleanish. Now, Cuillard is moving to defuse his biggest time bomb. Healthcare is the major issue for most Quebecers. And the minister is the poster boy for its dysfunction. Now, this week, Gaetan Barrette said he would welcome a new portfolio. You don't need to read between the lines to figure out what that means. Rumor has it that the head of Schum, Fabrice Brunet, just might be recruited to run as the new health czar. Now, whither the Bloc Québécois, like Eleanor Rigby, buried along with her name, nobody came. The seven caucus members who quit over Martin Willette's leadership are thinking about forming a new party. I can see it now, the new saviors of Quebec. The Magnificent Seven indeed, but the problem is there's nothing much magnificent about a group that lost any real relevance it ever had years ago. Well, that for her part says they've been spreading fake news about her. Ouch, where have we heard that before? All the lonely people, where do they all belong? Finally this week, something to be happy about. A big shout out to the city of Point Claire for doing the right thing. A new park will be named in honor of a Montreal legend, Tony Proudfoot. He died in 2010 after battling ALS. Point Claire Mayor John Belvedere says it's a perfect way to memorialize the life and career of an extraordinary man. Now, Proudfoot was a gifted defensive back for the Alouettes and later a college teacher and a broadcaster. An all-star in every sense of the word. Nice job, Point Claire.
I'm Barry Wilson. You can follow us on Facebook and Twitter. And please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And don't forget to check out our weekly poll on Facebook. We want to know what you think.